Hi folks, welcome along to another episode from Generation X Tech. What we're going to be looking at today is another transport related vlog and I'm going to be out in my Skoda Superb again looking at the technology that I've got in it. It's the, the top end um, L&K model so it's got um, all of the toys so uh, what we're looking at here is um, some of the uh, bits and pieces that are av available for it particularly we're going to be concentrating on adaptive cruise control so as well as being available in the Skoda Superb um, it's also available on many Volkswagen and Audi models and works in the same way so let's see how we get on with it Right, so we've got to drive from Kettering to Peterborough now. So on the way, I thought it would be an ideal chance to look at how the ACC, the Adaptive Cruise Control, works on the Mark III pre-facelift Skoda Superb. God, I love Kettering's rush hour. Okay, so now is probably a good time to start using the ACC. So let's just pull this lever back here. All right, so it shows on the screen there that we're gonna do a maximum of 20 and it should just keep pace with the car in front. Speed limit's 30, we'll put it up there so we can't go any faster than that. Here, car's braking automatically. I don't have to put any input into the pedals for this. It makes driving in this kind of traffic so much easier. Especially here, because if you had a manual transmission car, you'd be doing heel starts and everything. Right now, this, guy, this guy's waiting to come out, so I just tap the brake, let him out. Let them out, aren't they nice? I think they might have thanked me, not sure. So this lever here controls your speed, your cruise control, moving it down, takes it down by five, moving it up, moves it up by five. If you press the button on the end, it resets it or it decreases it by one depending on what mode it's in. Pulling it back increases it by one and then you've got a little rotary thing on the top which increases or decreases the distance that it keeps between you and the car in front now when the car comes to a complete stop for more than a couple of seconds like so oh no <laughs> it's still moving what it will do is it will stop completely and you have to just touch the accelerator again to get going. I don't think we're actually going to get to um, demonstrate it in this crawling traffic though. No. So I'm just going to disable the cruise control for now while we go around this roundabout and up to the A14. To do that you just move this lever back gently, if you push it too hard it clicks off completely. So the car's taking me quite nicely at a maximum of 70 miles an hour. I've also got lane assist in this car so I could actually take my hands off the wheel and it will keep me in lane. For about 10-15 seconds or so before we start there we go it's telling me to take control yeah now if I don't I've never tried it but uh, what it will do apparently is it will jab on the brakes to wake me up and if I still don't take control it will then stop me um, it'll keep me in lane put the hazards on and put the handbrake on in the middle of the road the facelift version the one that I've got on order apparently will actually drive you onto the hard shoulder if there is one. The screen here 
tells me the distance that I got between me and the car in front. So it can actually detect vehicles from a fair old distance away. Right, this truck's just indicating to pull out, so watch the car slow down automatically. Fantastic. to keep a safe distance now until the truck pulls in and now we will accelerate back up to the speed limit I'm going to disable the cruise now because I'm just about to turn off so the way you do that is again you just push this lever forward that's deactivated. Another way of doing it is to touch the brake, that will also deactivate it. The speed limit along here is 40, so I will re-enable the cruise control at that. Keep me nicely at the speed limit. Now the new version of the uh, Skoda Superb, the facelift and the Octavia apparently will have predictive cruise control where it will be able to react to speed limits and to bends and things. Now we're on ordinary roads so I'll increase the distance between me and the car in front as well with a little control over the top of the stalk. There we go. So what this will do look now is it should slowly increase the distance between me and the Octavia in front. Looking at how close he is to that lorry, I'd imagine that he could probably do with something like this in his car. Estimated time in traffic, seven minutes. Thank you, Waze. Don't see any traffic right now, though. Right, now we've come to a stop, the engine shut off. Truck in front's moved, engine starts again, but I've got to press the accelerator before the car will actually move forward again. So it's just the system making sure that I'm still awake. I think it must be school run time. Now don't open your door, thank you. Back to national speed limit, so let's manually put the control up to 60. Right now, this could be interesting because we've got um, a 40 limit just ahead. Now, this Kia might stick to it, but I've got a brand new Mercedes behind me, so. I'm going to stick to the speed limit and he's not going to like it. So that's it. Relatively stress-free journey in rush hour traffic thanks to adaptive cruise control. So there we go. As we can see, it takes a lot of the stress out of everyday driving in heavy traffic, the adaptive cruise control. So I hope you enjoyed that. We've got a new car coming very shortly within the next week or so. I'm told that it's uh, on its way to the dealer as I speak. So it's another superb and it's another L&K model, but it's the facelift. So that will be coming up within the next week or so. I hope to join you then.